These are the worst eight problems that students have with factoring. And if you are a teacher, you are probably shaking your head and saying, oh yeah, I have seen students make those mistakes plenty of times on tests, on quizzes, and it's usually just a mental error. And being a teacher myself, I have made the mental error in front of the classroom. I probably have even some YouTube videos on them. It's a very easy mistake to make. So why is it that the sixes give us such a problem? Well, six can be factored down into two different ways, right? We have five times one, and we have three times two. Now, a lot of times the confusion comes with the sixes is like when we're doing it with multiply with the positives and the negative, like it could be negative, you know, we're dealing with like a negative six. But when you're trying to factor something, I don't want you to think about the positives and the negatives. There's two things that I want you to understand. Okay, there's really two different equations when we're dealing when a is equal to one that we want to focus on. There's the one where our last number, our c, is going to be positive. That is gonna be looking for a sum. When our last number, our c, our constant is negative, that is going to be looking for a difference, okay? So this is what I want you to mentally understand because I don't think we need to do a long drawn out process to be able to quickly and easily mentally do these. Now typically the sum is easier for students to do than the difference. So let's go ahead and start with that. What I want you to do, or a quick little tip that sometimes I had my students do when they were first learning factoring, is just to recognize, look at the last number. If it's positive, let's write the number sum. All right, so what does sum mean? Well, what sum is going to tell us is that when we're looking at the factors of that term at C, we are going to find the sum, right? We want to add them together. So a five, oh, I'm sorry, why did I write a six? That's so weird. Okay, so we have six plus one is equal to a seven, and a three plus two is equal to a five, all right? Now, here's the thing that kind of goes into this, which reason I have this plus or minus. Everything adds into the plus or the minus, right? The plus or minus is going to be dealing with your middle term. So when you're dealing with a sum and a plus or minus, if you're looking for this factored form, if you have this as a positive, then that's going to mean your factored form, let's just do x, um, let's just do x plus h. That's gonna be an x plus h times a x, uh, plus, I don't know, K. But if it was negative, then that'd be an X minus an H or an X minus a K. So what I'm trying to tell you is when you're dealing with the sum, the factors are gonna be either both positive or both negative, okay? But how do you know which one if they're positive or negative? Look at the middle term. If the middle term is positive, then you know your two factors are gonna be positive. So let's go over here, six. Sum, right? So which of my two factors add to five? Well, you can see it's three plus two is five, right? Since my middle term is positive, I know this is going to be a X plus three times an x plus two. Over here, again, I have a sum, but my middle term is negative. That means my two factors both have to be negative. Well, again, what two numbers, which of my factors add up to give me a negative five? That's gonna be an x minus a three times an x minus a two. Let's go and look at the another sum. Sum, positive, and positive. That means both my factors are going to be positive, right? And I know six and one are gonna be my factors that add up to give me a seven. So this would mean x plus seven, x plus six times an x plus one. Over here, my middle term is negative, so that's gonna be x minus a six, times an x minus a one. Now most students get familiar with the sum and it's the difference that gives us all the trick and to, to be honest with you guys, that usually is where the mistakes comes into because students a lot of times will say, Mr. McGlogan here, the five, right? I know three plus two adds up to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, the last term is negative. So this is a difference. That is the big mistake where students make. They don't recognize the difference. When the last number is negative, your constant is negative, you're looking for the difference of your factors. So rather than trying to say, and it doesn't matter one, six minus five or one minus six, right? What is the difference of six and five? The difference between, I'm sorry, of six and one is going to be five, right? So I could say the difference of six and one is five. And I could say it's the same thing, three over plus two. It could be positive or negative, right? Because two minus three is negative one, three minus two is one. So you could say the difference of three and two is one, okay? So again, how do you know if that difference is going to be a positive difference or a negative difference? Again, it's all about the middle term, ladies and gentlemen. If the middle number is positive, then that means you're gonna have a positive difference, meaning the larger of your factors has to be positive. I'll say that again. 
When you have a difference, one factor is positive, one factor is negative. Look at your middle term. If your middle term is positive, that means that the difference is going to be positive, right? That means the larger of the two factors has to be positive. If the middle term is negative, that means you have a negative difference. That means the larger of your two factors has to be negative. So let's go and look at that over here. So here I have my two factors, right? They have a difference of five, which I know is gonna be six and one. Since my middle term is negative, that means the larger of my two factors, right? What's larger than six or one? Six is, that has to be the negative. Over here, now it's a positive. Now the larger of my two factors has to be positive. The larger factor between six and one is going to be six because I know they have a difference of five. So therefore that's an X plus six times an X minus one. And then over here, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that the difference here is positive one or negative one, right? Well, which two factors have a difference of one? three and two. This is positive. The larger of my two factors has to be positive, which is going to be three. And then over here, the difference is a negative one. So therefore, the larger of the two factors has to be negative. So I know this video is not a cure-all, but hopefully after going through all these examples and maybe doing some practice on your own, you will not make this mistake on your own.